God. Listen to the call and respond to it.
Hello everyone and welcome to Worship with Bethel International United Methodist. My name's Carrie. I get to work with the youth and sometimes they let me do announcements. It's kind of risky, but it's true. I'm so glad you found us for worship today, Sunday, July the 5th. Uh, whether you're watching on this day or a different day, we're glad you found us. We're going to start, as we often do, by getting ourselves focused by speaking aloud together our mission and our vision. Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And our vision is to be an amazingly international church where faith is contagious and invitational. Here, let me pass the offering plate to you now. Well, <laughs> sort of. On the screen are various ways you can make your offering to Bethel International Church. Our God is an amazing, blessing God who gives us gifts every day. We give not because we have to, and not just because others need our gifts, but because we want to bless God back. We want the gifts we've received to bless others too, and God makes that happen. So thank you, Bethel International Church, for all that you're doing. We are still counting down to Friday, July 17th at 6 p.m., when we hope to have our first trial in-person worship time. But in light of the soaring COVID-19 cases in Ohio, specifically in Franklin County, this is less sure to happen now than it was a week ago. Uh, you got e uh, details mailed out in email this week. That's gonna be a really important thing to pay attention to. Many safety protocols will be followed if we feel we can go forward uh, with the in-person worship on the 17th, but you really gotta watch your email for information. But never fear. Worship will continue to be posted online every Sunday morning. Uh, a study guide is available for this chosen worship series with questions for your family or small group or Sunday school class to discuss or for your personal study at home. On our homepage, uh, www.mybethel.org, click on Worship Resources, which is right beneath the worship service, and look for Discipleship Guide Download. It's a really cool tool to keep the message with you all week long. Here's some of what Bethel International Church is up to this week. Uh, we held our fourth Micah Monday Rally for Love. We continue to see big crowds of church members and neighbors and plan to keep it up until Election Day. Join us any Monday between 5 and 6 p.m. And do you remember $10 Tuesdays? We asked you a while back to donate toward Kroger gift cards for families from Faith Community Church on the Hilltop. You gave over $1,200. And this week, Pastor Glenn, along with Harry and Kathy Young, delivered the gift cards to Pastor Ben. They also got to take part in Bible story time and help make tie-dye shirts at Faith Community's weekly children's ministry. So thank you for helping our West Side neighbors through this hard time. Oh, and make sure you've got something ready for communion, because it's Communion Sunday. So if you need to pause now, for your bread and juice acquisition, do that, or uh, later in the service also, of course, is fine. But it is Holy Communion Sunday. Now, it's time to worship our amazing God.
Good morning. I'm Byung Yi Lee, the prayer leader today. Please join with me in the prayer for this worship series about being chosen by God. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Choose me and use me for your purpose. I lend my life back, O oh Lord, to you. Amen. And now, for Independence Week, uh, let me pray for you a prayer of Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. Almighty God, you have called us to walk for freedom, even as you called the children of Israel. Keep us strong. Keep us calm. Help us to love our enemy. And above all, keep the fires of freedom burning in our hearts so that no one can turn us around. You have sent us to fight, not just for ourselves, but to fight for this nation so that democracy might exist here for the whole world to see. Keep this vision in our heart, and may we one day wake up and found a nation where all people can vote, where all children can get a decent education, where every man and woman can have a job according to their abilities, where violence and bloodshed and hate and prejudice shall be no more. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is now time for the children's message, which means Miss Sarah is going to talk to the kids. Yes, the adults can still listen in. We all like to listen to what Miss Sarah has to say also. If you need to pause the video and gather the children, do that. Otherwise, let's just go for it. Hey there. It's good to see you. I have a game today. It's called Which Would You Choose? Would you choose peanuts or popcorn? Tough, huh? I would go with popcorn right now. How about bubble gum or peppermint gum? Probably bubble gum. All right, how about, would you choose a Snickers or a Twix? I love them both, but I'd have to go with Snickers. And my last one, would you choose a sugar cookie or a chocolate chip cookie? I know, it's so hard. I'd have to go with sugar cookie. This week, we're starting a new sermon series called Chosen, and it's based on the story of Samuel. Did you know that you have also been chosen? That's right. You have been chosen as part of the family of God. The Bible says that even before God made the world, he loved us and he chose us. Now, I know that we all have our own families, but as followers of Jesus, we have been chosen and adopted into the family of God. As part of this family of God, we must live for God and we must live for others. Here's the coolest part about being part of the family of God is that God deliberately chose us. Now, I'm not rich. I'm not a superstar. I'm just an ordinary person. And that's exactly what makes me special in God's eyes. When all I have to do is to ask God to use me and open my heart. And then God, through me, can do all these cool, amazing, and extraordinary things. Here's our prayer for this week. It says, speak, Lord, for your servant, that's us, is listening. Choose me and use me for your purposes. I lend or give my life, O Lord, to you. Amen. So think about this week. How can God use you? to help and to serve others. I'll be anxious to see all those great, great things he can do through you. Have a great week. I'll see you soon.
There was a man of Ramathan named Elkanah, son of Jeroam, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Every year this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions of the meat to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to tease her severely, to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went, year after year. As often as Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, Penina would provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah said, Hannah, why are you crying? Why don't you eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they'd had food and drink, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. Hannah was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. She made this vow. O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, will give to your servant a son. Then I will set him before you as a Nazarite, consecrated to you until he dies. He shall drink neither wine nor any strong drink, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli watched her mouth. Hannah was praying silently. Her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. No, sir, I am a woman deeply troubled. I haven't had anything to drink, but I've been pouring out my soul before the Lord. I don't think I'm a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety all this time. Go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. May I find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her room, ate and drank with her husband, and her expression was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back home to Ramah. Elkanah had sexual relations with his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel. One meaning of Samuel is the one asked for. For she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Elkanah and all his household went up to make the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is no longer nursing, I will bring him so he can appear in the presence of the Lord and remain there at Shiloh forever. I will offer him as a Nazarite, consecrated to the Lord forever. Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So she stayed and nursed her son. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, some flour, and a skin of wine. She brought Samuel to the house of the Lord at Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, As surely as you live, sir, I am the woman who was standing here in your presence, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. Therefore, I have lent this son to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. May the Lord our God bless you and grant you children to replace this chosen one whom you have prayed for and whom you gave unto the Lord. My heart rejoices in the Lord, and the Lord my spirit is lifted high. There is no one holy like our Lord. There is no one besides the Lord. There is no rock like our God. He will give strength to his chosen and exalt the power of his anointed.
So every year our church partners with our youth theater group called Sunshine to do a biblical musical. There's always a, a local show and then they take it on the road for a week or so. And this year's cast was starting rehearsals back in November, but then of course, like everything else, it got shut down for COVID-19, which means that for the first time in 20 years, there will not be a Sunshine show this summer. So we're thinking, what can we do about that? What, what can we do to make up? Well, the next best thing is this. Last weekend, practicing careful physical distancing, some of the cast members got together and they recorded six songs from this summer's musical, or what would have been this summer's musical. It's called Chosen, the Story of Samuel. And so every Sunday during this series, we're gonna share one of those songs with you and we are praying that next summer, Sunshine will have a dynamite in-person show. So the central question of the musical chosen and of the biblical story of Samuel is this, what does it mean to be chosen by God? What does it mean to be chosen by God? Well, obviously it's a great honor, it's a high privilege, but being chosen also comes with great responsibility and sometimes at a high cost. So as we start this Chosen series, will you pray with me again our Chosen Prayer? I want you to pray this every single day during this series. It'll be available on the website. I'll email a slide out to you so you have it. Let's pray it together now. Speak, Lord for your servant is listening. Choose me and use me for your purposes. I lend my life, O oh Lord, back to you. Amen. You know, at a, a deep-seated level, we all want to be chosen, right? You know, it's, it's more than that. We all long, we need to be chosen, to be taken seriously, to be included in things. So when they're choosing sides for basketball or when they're picking who's going to be in the school play, we're all like this. Me, anyone. Oh, oh, pick me. Oh, I know, I know me, me. I remember junior high dances, those awkward wonderful, terrible times, and the girls would be lined up on the other side of the room from us boys, and there were some of them I really wanted to come and, and ask me to dance, but I would never have said this out loud. I probably would never have looked up from my feet, but what I was thinking inside is this. Me, anyone. Oh, oh, pick me. Oh, I know. I know me, me. When you put in a job application, you know your only prayer is this, Dear God, please, this time, let them... Me, anyone. Oh, oh, pick me. Oh, I know. I know me, me. And when the person you love says that they are either going to have to marry you or move on. I mean, I know that you're supposed to just be concerned about their happiness, but really all you can think is this. Me, anyone. Oh, oh pick me. Oh, I know, I know me, me. And when it's time, as it will be in a couple of months, for the nominating committee to identify new church leadership board members, I mean, everybody is thinking. Me, anyone. Oh, oh pick me. Oh, I know, I know me, me. Well, well, maybe not 
that one, huh? which reveals part of the truth that I'm trying to say today, which is, you know, everybody wants to be chosen, and yet being chosen can also feel sometimes like a burden. It can be overwhelming. And it was like that in the Bible. You know, God chose Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And remember what Moses said? Moses said, oh Lord, please send someone else. You know, don't choose me, Lord. And in the book of Esther, all of the Jews in Persia were depending upon Esther the queen to go to the king and save their lives, to intercede for them. Only Esther knew that no one, not even the queen, could enter the king's presence without being invited at penalty of death. Esther's uncle Mordecai encouraged her, said, go to the king, you know, maybe you have become queen just for such a moment as this. But all of a sudden being queen, being chosen, didn't feel quite so special anymore. You know, even Jesus had to wrestle with being the chosen one at his baptism God declared from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, I'm well pleased with you. That must have felt so good. But then immediately, Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And there he began to wonder if he wanted to be the chosen one, since he knew that what it meant was the road to the cross. To be chosen by God, I mean, what an honor, what a privilege, and yet how heavy the burden, how much the sacrifice. Do you know the scene from Fiddler on the Roof? Tevya, the main character, he loves God, really he does. But after all this bad news, Tevya has this to say to God one day. God, did you have to send me news like that today of all days? I know, I know we are the chosen people. But once in a while, can't you choose someone else? So we are making our way, little by little, we're making our way towards what it means to be chosen by God. You know, the Old Testament books of 1st and 2nd Samuel, they're named after Samuel, but they're really about King David. This whole story is always leading up to Israel's greatest king, which is David. But the story doesn't just jump in. It doesn't start with David. It doesn't even start with Samuel. The story starts with Hannah, this woman from some out of the way place in the hill country. And you know, if, if a woman from some out of the way place isn't supposed to matter in the Bible story, we'll add to it, the Hannah is also barren, which means that she cannot produce an heir for her family. Talk about somebody who is unchosen in that culture. And yet Hannah decides not to accept things the way they are. She decides to change it, to do something about it. And what she does is that she prays. And she prays so fervently, she prays so intensely that the priest at the temple thinks she must be drunk. And Hannah doesn't care what the priest says. She, she ropes the priest into her plan to get a son. She ropes her husband into her plan. And pretty soon, lo and behold, there is a son. And they name him Samuel. So you might think that the chosen is really just about the high and the mighty. But Samuel's story says that women from out of the way places, barren women, can also play a part. And so can their loving husbands. And so can elderly priests. And so can little boys. You know, the Bible says that if God is in it, little things can become big things. And you know that's still true. It took just one relatively unknown black man in Minnesota, tragically, it took his death to begin to wake up a whole country to our history of racial injustice. You know, if God is in it, there is no out of the way place. There are no unimportant people and there are no churches too small 
to make a difference. Hannah did not accept the way things were, and the whole world began to change. Little by little, we are, we're making our way towards what it means to be chosen by God. Now, you might also think that being chosen by God is intensely personal, that it, it's just you and Jesus and no one else is involved in it, but that's not how it was for Samuel. I mean, eventually God did speak to Samuel in the middle of the night, and we'll get to that story. But before that happens, so many people have had their influence in Samuel's life. Remember that his mother prayed for him. She dedicated him to the Lord, and she left him at the temple. Her husband, Elkanah, somehow went along with all of that. And the old priest, Eli, encouraged Hannah and mentored Samuel. And, you know, I have to say that's how it is with my own story, too. I believe that God chose me to be in ministry. God chose me personally to be in ministry, but along the way, so many people had their influence in that. My parents raised me in the church. They taught me to love the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was about 10 years old, Reverend Vaughn put his arm around my shoulder and encouraged me to think about being a pastor someday. And when I was in a period of self-doubt, Jeff Ford kind of encouraged me and mentored me along the way. And so you might wonder, well, did God choose you or did those people choose you? To which the answer is, well, yes, <laughs> yeah. We're, we're circling around, we're making our way towards what it means to be chosen by God. It's not just the high and mighty. And other people help God choose us, or at least they help us to know how God has chosen us. We're, we're closing in. Let's look now at Hannah's prayer. That's sort of the heart of this story. And when Hannah prays, as you know, she asks God to grant her a son. And she says, well, this prayer is for me. This is what will relieve my misery. This is for me. And But also in the same prayer, Hannah also offers that son back to God as a Nazarite, somebody who is especially consecrated to God. David Jensen says that Hannah received a child only to give him away. For Hannah to receive an answer to prayer is not to clutch on to what we have received. It's not to, to hang on to what is ours at all costs. No, for Hannah, a prayer is not truly answered until we are willing to give away what we have received. We're making our way little by little. We're circling ever closer to what it means to be chosen by God. When he was still just a little boy, Hannah takes her son, her precious son, her son whose name to her means the, the one who was the answer to prayer, the, the one who is the answer to my prayer. She takes that son and she leaves him at the temple in Shiloh. She leaves him there to be raised by the old priest Eli. She leaves him there to serve the Lord. She leaves him there to be the Lord. You know, it's a frightening thing to think about, isn't it? To leave a little boy at a giant temple with an old man. Every parent who reads this story must shudder when they think about that. And yet, in a way, that's what parenting is always leading up to, isn't it? Letting our children go letting them go to camp, to work, to college, letting them go to their own home and to start their own family, letting them go. Here is how Hannah puts it. She says, for this child I prayed and God answered my prayer. Therefore, she says, I have lent him, I have loaned him to the Lord for all of his life. He is given to the Lord. So we've been circling around it. We have been closing in on what it means to be chosen by God. And at last, we have arrived. To be chosen by God is to be loaned to the Lord. It is to be not our own, but to be 
gods. Now, ultimately, of course, everybody is gods, whether they know it or not. I mean, it's none of us creates herself, right? None of us saves his own soul. And when we die, we all go back to God in some way or other. So maybe a better way to put it is that to be chosen by God is to acknowledge that we are loaned to the Lord. It is to know that we are not ours, but God's. It is to live a life based on the truth that we belong. To God. You know, people who do not acknowledge that they are chosen by God ask questions like this. They say, well, what am I going to do with my life? And who am I going to allow to be part of my life? And how can I enrich and enhance my life? And how can I protect my life? It's all about my life, my life, my life. But to be chosen by God is to ask, well, what do you want to do with this life, God? It is to ask, what, how do you want me to serve you? Who do you want me to serve with this life of yours today? It is to ask, how can I give this life of yours away today, Lord Jesus Christ? To be chosen by God is to be loaned to the Lord and therefore it is to ask different questions about life it is to have different priorities in life it is to live with a different purpose Samuel lived for the Lord he was the Lord's all of his life so to be chosen by God like Tevye if we're honest deep inside we're all probably kind of weighing whether we really want to be chosen by God. I mean, there are so many things we want to do. There is so much control we want to have of life. There are so many ways that we want to protect what we think is ours. To be chosen by God. You know, deep inside, we're probably all kind of weighing whether we really want that or not. And I'm here today to say we do. <laughs> we do. Deep inside and no matter what the cost, we want to be chosen by God. I wonder if you'll pray with me now the famous Wesley Covenant prayer. Let us pray. I am no longer my own but yours. Put me to what you will, rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. Amen. In other words, Lord, choose me. <laughs> choose me. We come now to the time of Holy Communion. Please have your bread and juice ready at home. With me today uh, at the table is Reverend Karen Kirk. She and I will lead you through the liturgy, which will serve as the blessing of your bread and cup, which become for us the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Pastor Seong. As he said, I'm Reverend Karen Cook, and I serve as the assistant to the district superintendent and Director of Community Ministries for the Capital Area North District. It is my honor and privilege to share in this communion with you today. Our liturgy today is out of the Black Church tradition from a worship resource called A Trumpet in Zion. Pastor Si Young and I will pray the pastor's words. The words for all of us to say together will appear on your screen. 
At the end of the liturgy, we will direct you when to partake of the bread and drink from the cup. Now let us confess our sins before God and one another. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way of peace. Come into the brokenness of our lives and our land with your healing love. Make us willing to bow before you in true repentance and to bow to one another in real forgiveness. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, melt our hard hearts and dismantle the systems and prejudice that separate us. Fill us, O Lord, with your perfect love, which casts out our fear and bind us together in that unity which you share with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of our ancestors, hope of a living one. We offer you praise and thanksgiving because you loved us enough to empty yourself an awesome divinity and entered into our human struggle, taking upon yourself our despised color and position in life. You have walked our valley of sorrow and felt the whip of tear and flesh from your back. You know what it means to be denied justice and to be abandoned by friends. So when our nationality is reviled, our, our color, color scorned, and, and our, our dignity defamed, until, until we are without comfort or hope, we remember you. You called together twelve and walked to achieve unity. You taught self-determination and role model responsibility. You healed and set free in order that others might maintain their economic security and have purpose in their daily lives. It was your faith that allowed you to march with the determination of Golgotha here, with the help from one black brother, Simon. Mm -hmm. You carried a cruel cross. And on that old rugged cross, you, you became, became our sin and shame, sanctifying pain and, and giving birth to the, the universal, universal church. church. So with all the company of saints, those who have walked with you to Calvary, that they might be raised to new life with you. We praise you, saying, Holy, 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 compassionate, identifying God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the, in the highest. Blessed is our Savior Jesus, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, who took, of our, took the, who the cup of suffering did not avoid, who on the night that he was betrayed took bread gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, remember me. 
Now together, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has, has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's suffering and death until he comes. In the body that is broken, in the cup that is poured out, we restore to memory and hope all of the unnamed and forgotten victims of racism and oppression. We hunger for the bread of that new age, and we thirst for the wine of the realm which is to come. Come, Holy Spirit, hover over and dwell within these earthly things, and make us one body with Christ, that we, who are baptized into his death, may walk in newness of life, that what is sown in dishonor may be raised in glory, and what is sown in weakness may be raised in power. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, Christ has made everything ready. Come, eat, the table is spread. Lowly stocks of wheat stood useless in a field until they were pulled together, bruised, crushed, beaten, and baked to become bread for a hungry world. When we eat this loaf, it is our sharing in the body of Christ. So eat now in remembrance of Christ. Single graves lay close to the ground until they were picked, stomped, crushed, and smashed to provide drink for a thirsty world. When we give thanks over the cup, it is our sharing the blood of Christ. Drink now in remembrance of Christ. We have gathered for community worship and feasting. Now we are sent again into the world with the authority and power of the Holy Spirit. The, the Lord, Lord has prepared, prepared a table for, table for us, us in, in the, the presence, presence of, of our, our enemies. enemies. We require nothing else for the journey. All our needs are supplied by all sufficient God. A mighty fortress is our God. God. A shelter in the time of storm. The world has not changed. Evil continues. But we are commanded by God to make a difference. We will cry loud and fear not. We will lift up our voices like trumpets in Zion. We will proclaim that this is the day of our God. Amen. And, and amen. amen.
the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.